Welcome to DIY Volts. I'm Seth. Today I'm going to be installing solar power into this camper. Now there are multiple ways you can install solar power, but in this version I'm going to be doing a very simple install. I'm going to have a charge controller, an inverter, solar panels, and a battery. Now this system right here could have solar connected in other ways, but in order to run the camper off of the system, I'm just going to take the shore power, the cable from the indoor unit and bring it over and plug it up into the inverter and it's just going to kind of run off of itself if that makes sense. So let me go ahead and show you the equipment I'm gonna use and then we will get to this installation. There are four main components that I'm going to be installing today. First of all, I have two of these 200 watt flexible solar panels. These will have MC4 connectors and connect together I'll point them into the sun and it will provide power to the next component, which is a charge controller. This is going to take the DC power from the solar panels and it's going to read the voltage of the battery and charge the battery until it's full and not go any more than that. So I've got the charge controller. This is the battery I've got. It's a lithium iron phosphate 12.8 battery and that will allow us to run several things in the camper from the solar. And then lastly is this 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. This is what's going to take the power from the battery, convert it into AC power, and have regular receptacles right here. So with these four components, we should be able to get this camper up and running with some solar. All right, let's go ahead and start the first installation, which is going to be the charge controller right here. This particular camper has a hatch here on the front and if you look inside it's got a spot that says future charge controller and future inverter location. You can see the little sticker right there. This little board is actually quite flimsy but it is the place they want you to hang this equipment. So what I'm going to do is use some small screws here and I'm going to use a drill and I'm going to put the charge controller up in here but I'm also going to try to find a place where the inverter can be down here as well so uh, I'm going to see if I can film any of this but as you can see it's quite a tight space. I brought the inverter in here so that I could hold the charge controller up on top of it and just make sure there was sufficient room in here and there is but it's close so what I may end up doing is moving uh, the charge controller this way a bit more so I can get to its screws and move the inverter that way some. All right, this really is some tight quarters in here. So I have pre-drilled to hopefully get this in here on camera for you, but <laughs> I'm just gonna put the inverter down here on the bottom. Luckily, the Rododo 2001 inverter has the power button and the receptacles over here on this side and also the screen to make this easier to see. I got the inverter down here and hopefully I'll be able to get the charge controller over here and that will give it enough space so I can access the screws over here and give enough space up top for any airflow that needs to pass through. So all right, um, I'll go ahead and get some screws installed here. All right, how did I do here? Okay, not too bad. I now have the charge controller and the inverter installed. Now it's time to put the battery in place. Let me get that set here. Now this is just a single 12.8 lithium iron phosphate battery which means it has a 1,280 watt hour capacity. So it's not gonna be able to run tons, but you could easily put more than one battery in here. Now keep in mind that if you use the lithium iron phosphate, it is much lighter and lasts a lot longer than your lead acid batteries. And that means uh, you can do a lot more with them and even have more of them because it won't be so heavy on your uh, vehicle as you have to tow this around. All right, now, obviously we would want to have this battery locked down, otherwise it may uh, have some sliding around issues, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna get this uh, 
installed here. So what I'm going to do is find the positive and negative terminals. So this side over here is the positive. See how it's red? And this one over here is the negative. It is black. And I'm going to take these cables. I've got uh, this one right here, the black one. And I'm going to uh, get this attached here. Now, one thing to note, whenever you go to attach a battery to an inverter, sometimes the battery will uh, shock or spark because the uh, capacitors inside the inverter are being charged too quickly. Um, so I've actually got a big resistor that will prevent that spark from happening. I know it's tight spaces and hard to see here, but if I place a resistor like this into that terminal and then touch here, it will slowly charge those capacitors. Wait a second or two. And now if I remove that and then stick my cable to that terminal, it will not have a spark. See, no spark. If you look here on the charge controller, you'll see where it has solar panels over here and battery over here. I'm gonna take some wire. Currently I've got some 14 gauge and I'm going to put the positive negative in here and then attach the other side to the battery. Now these wires right here have an MC4 connector on them and that is gonna to connect to the solar panels. The other end, as you can see right here, is just bare wire. That is gonna be connected into the charge controller. So let's do this first, and then we will connect our solar panels together. The black wire, once again, is the negative side, and that's gonna go over here on this one. Now I have two solar panels and you can see they are separate. So what I'm gonna do is run these in series. So the negative of this one will go to the positive of that one. And then the overall positive negative between the two of them will go to the camper. So if you look up here, we've got a tag that says, this is a negative. So I'm gonna grab that one. I'm gonna come over here and get the positive of this panel and connect these together. Now it's time to take the overall positive and negative of these two panels and connect them to the charge controller. Now, my uh, MC4 connector on this red wire is actually backwards. Um, it should be the other way around. So this is actually acting as my negative. And then this one right here will be the positive. All right, we've got some good news. There are now lights here showing up on the charge controller. We have solar input, the battery has been detected, and there is an error. I believe the error is that the battery is running a little bit low because I went to turn it on earlier and it had uh, an issue. So, but we have some good news that sunshine is going to the battery. So let me let this sit for a little while and then see if we can turn the uh, inverter on. I used a multimeter and checked the battery. It was at 11.1 volts, so it was low. However, a few minutes in the sun and the battery is now showing 12.5 as it is charging. So this system is working correctly. Now, just for the fun of it, let me try turning this on and see if we get any power. Yep, we do have power on the inverter now. Very cool. It says 12.4 and 12.5. So. Consistency is good. All right, now this doesn't have anything connected to it yet, but let me show you what we're gonna do to get this connected to our camper. This plug right here is a 30 amp plug that's coming from the camper. This normally would plug up to a 30 amp receptacle and have shore power or normal grid power. The inverter that we just installed has typical house plugs that look a lot like this one right here. So in order to get these to connect, I've just simply got an adapter. I found this at Walmart for about $12. So I'm going to plug these up right here and that turns the 30 amp cable into the standard 120 outlet as you see right here. So let's go ahead and plug this into the inverter and then test out our system. Now, if we were to look on the charge controller, we'll see that it has a voltage of 13.5. 
So the battery is going to be uh, holding or fully charged at around 13.5, but it will actually reach 14.4 volts whenever it is in maximum sun and in the charging cycle. So whenever we turn on the inverter, this number of 13.5 may drop down a little bit. I'm gonna take this cable and plug it into one of these receptacles here on the inverter. There we go. I'm gonna turn the inverter on. It says 13.4 volts on the battery. Uh-oh, something is turned on inside. Inside the camper, we have got this. I think it's off though. Well, let's test out some lights here. That one is working, good. I think this inverter and battery should have sufficient power to run the air conditioner. Oh yeah, that's on. Let's go check our power draw. That AC unit is pulling around 400 watts whenever it's turned on to the uh, low setting. As predicted, the battery voltage did drop down to about 13, which is still fine with the amount of sunshine that's coming into this right now. So this air conditioner is pulling 400 watts. Let's go ahead and turn that off. If I tried to run the air conditioner and something else big, such as this dehumidifier, and maybe even a, a plug-in cooktop, it may end up having an issue where it uh, triggers a over voltage or over wattage on that inverter. I have the air conditioning unit turned off and this is pulling 31 watts off of the battery. Now keep in mind that inverters like this will continue to draw power even if nothing is running. So if you know you're gonna be gone for a certain amount of time, go ahead and turn off your inverter. Now this inverter does not have a remote plug, but some of them do, and you can turn this off from inside. Um, so in this case, I just have to push that power button to turn it off. Now the charge controller will continue to charge even if the inverter is turned off. And there we have it. That is one way to connect solar power to a camper like this. Just simply install a charge controller, a battery, and an inverter, and then plug the cable that goes to the rest of the RV into that inverter using a special cable to go from the 30 amp plug to the uh, regular typical house outlet. Now you may have noticed there are a few things missing, uh, either a fuse or a breaker. Uh, it's true, I have one, I just didn't bring what I needed to get that installed. And so uh, you definitely wanna have either a main disconnect for this system or have a fuse like this or a breaker in order to turn things off whenever needed. Now, what are the limitations of running this type of system in a camper? So keep in mind that that battery is only a 1,280 watt hour and the inverter is a 2,000 watt output. So if I were to turn on, say, the air conditioner at 700 watts and then try to use a hot plate, which may also be uh, plugged in and electric, then it would probably trip the uh, inverter sensor as uh, over wattage because we're using too much watts. So in this case, I would have to turn off the air conditioner in order to cook with a cook plate. Um, so just keep that in mind. If your camper is connected to shore power, it might try to pull more out of the inverter than the inverter is capable of doing. Now, I'm just using a 12 volt system with a 12 volt inverter, and that means you can do sometimes a 3000 watt inverter, but you can't really do much more than that. Um, so just keep that in mind. There are some limitations on this system. Also, the charge controller that I've got has a maximum input of, I think, 100 uh, volts. And you can do 40 amp, 600 watts max. So it may take a little while for that battery to fully charge with that amount of power. So I've currently got 400 watts charging that battery. And if you're using it during the day, it may take some time for that battery to charge back up. What would be beneficial is if I had two, three, maybe even four batteries in this system that would have a lot more storage and potential for running this size camper. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Seth with DIY Volts, and I will see you in the next video.